I started in gold mining back in 1980. Got out of the Navy SEALs just after Vietnam. I was looking for something to do and the gold prices started going up. And um, with all my underwater experience, I, I had the idea that maybe I could find some gold. The old timers, the earlier generations of miners, um, they were not able to get out into the middle of the river, especially the bigger rivers like, like this one because they didn't have the technology to get the water off the gold deposits. And so that's left long reaches in the, in the modern rivers that have yet to been mined. And um, the only technology for getting down at the bottom of these rivers is with suction gold dredges. And, um, and I've, I've been doing that for a long time and have, have somewhat developed a big part of the technology to get to the bottom of these rivers. The beauty of gold mining is that all we have to do is go down there and trade our labor, hard work, as much as we want to do, as hard as we want to do it, we can turn that right into real wealth. Most of us who are out here doing it, we make a good wage and we live free. Uh, the, the cost of living out here isn't very much, the overhead isn't very much, and the amount of gold that you can pull out of the river if you work hard if you work hard and you get through the learning curve, um, can be quite substantial. It's one of the few things that anybody can do in the modern age and actually bring real wealth right up and show it to you in your hands. At any given time, there's at least 100 prospectors, sometimes more, around here associated with our group. And as a result of that, there's a secondary economy that has, that has sprung up all along this river and even into Wairika and into Medford uh, because everybody that comes out here has to buy groceries, needs to get their hair cut, stays in the RV parks, buys uh, uh, supplies for their car, gas, you know, all of the things that somebody needs when they're, when they're living and also when they're operating equipment on the river. And um, our estimate is that the annual income associated with our program is $60 million a year, $60 million plus thousands and thousands of dollars that we pay in taxes. It's quite a substantial economy that has built up all around the, the, just this one single activity of gold mining. Our adversaries have filed several lawsuits. The first one was against the Forest Service about three or four years ago. They sued the Forest Service to stop suction dredging. We intervened because we didn't believe that the federal government was really defending our rights as well as we could. And so we intervened in the litigation and won it. Since then, they have turned around and they've sued the state of California twice. And that's on the grounds that the environmental impact statement that supports our regulations was completed in 1994, and they're saying that it's too old. And so they want that environmental impact statement updated, and so do we. We would love to go through that process. We're very comfortable that nothing has changed in the way that fish are doing things and nothing has changed in the way that we're doing things. And we believe that if you put us under a microscope, we would make it through the, the process just fine. In the litigation, the judge ordered the state of California to update the EIR. The problem is that the state of California is broke. And it has taken them a long time to get the money together to, to pay for the update. And they've started the EIR process, but it's not moving fast enough for the anti-mining activists, so they are now suing to shut down our entire industry until the EIR process is finished. We have a whole industry, a $60 million industry that has built up around an environmental impact statement and the anti-mining activists have yet to come forward with one dead fish, not one dead fish, not one harmed fish, not one bit of, of any information that would show that we're causing any harm to any fish all they can say is that the EIR that supports us is too old. But they can't say anything that we're doing wrong. It would seem like our adversaries are moving forward to take our entire industry away from us just because California doesn't have enough money to study us. And, and, and that, would, that, that would seem fundamentally wrong. The reason they haven't been able to get judges to shut us down is because the judges keep saying that an evidentiary hearing would be necessary so that he can weigh the evidence of harm. And, and we keep saying, let's have an evidentiary hearing. But our adversaries say, no, thank you. And that, that's because they don't have any evidence of harm. So what they have done, because they can't get a judge to shut us down, is they've gone to the California legislature and they have uh, managed to pass a bill through the California legislature. Just, it just passed the Senate a couple days ago. And that bill is called um, Senate Bill 670. And it's now going to the governor. 
It's, if the governor signs that bill, it will eliminate our industry altogether until the environmental impact statement is finished. And our concern is that uh, this process of an environmental impact study and, and the, the California Environmental Quality Act will allow for our adversaries to sue and obstruct the process and they can keep that process going for 10 years or longer, basically putting us out of business. Not for anything that we ever did wrong, but just on the, on the question uh, if our earlier EIR is too old. If they shut our industry down, not only are they going to eliminate the small-scale gold mining industry in California, and that's going to follow to Oregon for sure, but they're gonna, they will eliminate all of the secondary business enterprises that support that. In Siskiyou County, Northern California, the official unemployment rate is 17%. Watch that go up when they put the miners out of business. That, that right there is freedom, economic freedom right there. And uh, we, we Americans ought not to give it up lightly. Mining in all its forms has been important to the area ever since pioneer days. The, uh, the history of the area has involved mining for materials as diverse as gold and copper and lead and zinc, silver and platinum. Um, mining is ongoing. We get virtually everything other than other than wood and paper and wool and cotton is coming from a mine. So you may not recognize that, that that's where it's coming from, but it's all coming out of the ground. The miners that come to see the geologists and find out about their mines many times will bring ore samples or will have in their minds a picture of the ore that they're working with. And if we look through the collections, we can look at the ore and see which minerals are in the ore, which mines that have produced the ore are similar to the one that, that the miner might bring in. We can also look at the metal samples themselves if they're mining for, for gold, for example, free gold, um, wire gold that's, that's taken out of a load mine has a different look than placer gold and these tell us things like which district the golds come from, how far the golds move since it came out of the rock, um, a whole bunch of different things like that that are important to the miners as they try to figure out where to go look on their claims or near their claims for more gold. A big part of our job is we make geologic maps. The geologic maps are used for a wide range of things. They're used to understand geologic hazards like landslides and earthquakes, they're used to look at the distribution of aquifers and, and that tells us different things about the groundwater. But they're also used to look for mineral deposits. The other thing that the Department of Geology and Mineral Industries has is an extensive library of geologic publications. And these include everything from geologic maps made by the department to theses by masters and PhD students from all across the United States who have worked here. We also have files that contain information on specific mines. In addition to the files, we have oversized maps that show what's going on underground in many of the mines. Usually the maps, although they may not be real specific as to the exact location of the mine, if you can find one of the entrances and figure out which one it is, then the maps are usually good enough that you can plot the other or find the other openings based on that and see whether or not they've caved in or whether or not they're open and, and how safe they are. When the department was first started in the 1930s during the depression, uh, part, of the, part of the motivation for that was to help the miners uh, find productive deposits. So the Grants Pass Field Office of the department has been here for the past 70 years. And this year, 2009, we're going to have to shut the department office here down and I'll be relocating to the Portland office so people that need to contact a geologist about the geology in southwest Oregon will need to call me up there. Um, it's going to be a big change for me and it's a big change for the department but it's something we have to do. The mining claims passed from my grandfather and then they passed to my mother. Well my mother decided to pass them down to me. So now I am the mining claim owner along with my mother. Growing up out here is a very a learning experience. You get to see more wildlife. You, you learn a lot. After being out here and growing up, 
moving down there. I got married and had to come back and raise my children out here. And uh, this is my wife, Jeannie, Jeannie Nelson. Being up here with Cody and we're raising our kids up here. Uh, the kids are signed in with uh, virtual schooling, so thanks to modern technology, we can homeschool them on the internet. Um, computers and the internet is what is helping that happen. Uh, computers are made by the stuff that we mine, uh, platinums and, and nickel and stuff like that. As far as being out here, it's a great thing for the kids. They're more apt to go out and find a stick and play around and have fun, use their imagination go sliding off of little hills, whereas down below in town, they don't do that. All they want to do is sit in front of the TV and watch cartoons and play their computer games and stuff like that. Up here, we're a family. We go down as a family and we go mining and they help out. And a lot of times they argue, but <laughs> they're kids. Um, it, it, it's very educational. We can walk down and my son just happened to look down and watch a snake. It had got a lizard and started eating the lizard, so we just sat there and watched it. You know, that's stuff that you would only see on National Geographic Channel unless you're able to stop and take the time and be able to sit there and watch stuff like that. We can look across the creek and see bears and we can hear them crashing down the trees and stuff. And yeah, it's scary, but it's great education. Anywhere else, you'd have to go pay money at a zoo to see something like that. Um, but up here, it's it's all learning and it's it's great. We have a propane stove. We have a propane refrigerator. Our water is gravity fed. We have a water barrel outside that whenever the kids need to wash their hands or whatever they need to do with water, they can do that. Uh, because of the gravity feed hose, they can take their showers. We have a generator. We usually run it in the evening so that way the kids can watch them television and we charge up our batteries and stuff like that. We have basically everything you could ever need time. out here in the wilderness mining and making a living with our family. This is called a high banker. We take the mineral and the material and we'll dump it right here on this. From there we wash it down into a classifier screen which goes in classifier screens right here so none of the big rock gets in there. If too much big rock gets in, your gold will float out from your ripples. The ripples catch the gold. And basically, we just classify it down. These right here are the ripples, and this works just like the ocean or a river. You got high points, and right behind your high points, like say if you're in the river and you got a rock, water flows around it, which drops all your heavies right behind it. All your heavies will stay in the ripples. Later on, you'll clean this stuff out, concentrate it down one more time, and move it to your table or into your pan. table is basically your big gold pan except for you can run a lot of material on it at once it acts like the ocean all of your materials actually come up to the highest point instead of the lowest point because of the friction and the vibration of it just like the ocean um, ocean throws black sand and everything else out onto the shores I use a vacuum setup to vacuum up the gold and from there, I'll clean it out in a tiny little pan. After you got it in your tiny little pan, you can come back along with a sucker bottle and suck up all your gold.